Joining us now, uh, Verizon Chief Executive Officer, with them for 11 years since the beginning of Verizon Wireless, the pride of Penn State, uh, Daniel Mead. Mr. Mead, good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here with you, Tom. It is all the good news out. We've seen Verizon just go, go, go. The stock has gone well. It's almost like too good to be true. Is this like, you know, buying the rumor and finally selling the news? Well, the way that I look at it is to think about our credo that we're going to do our best today and we're going to do better tomorrow. And we focus on that in every aspect of our business. You look at price as being determinant. Let's bring up this quote from Craig Moffat. I know Dan Mead, you know Craig Moffat at Sanford Bernstein. I love this game theory here. Perhaps the real question to ask about Verizon iPhone is not how many Verizon will sell, but instead what will AT&T do to prepare and respond? What do you expect to see from your competition? Well, our focus is on delivering the absolute best experience for every one of our customers. We're focused on the foundation of our network and the network quality. Uh, we're focused on the combination with this great operating system from iPhone 4 and then the superb experience from our employees that deliver the service. So we're going to stay focused on our game and what's important. Right. And uh, we'll let the competitors do what they feel they need to do. When will price play in here at the consumer side? You expect there to be a price war into 11 and into 2012. There's got to be some response there when you've got four players, two dominant, a duopoly, Verizon and AT&T, and then you've got Sprint and T-Mobile following up. Will there be a price war? I don't think there's a price war. I think it's all around the value proposition. And we work to build the foundation of our value on our network and then our business partners, the operating systems and the devices. Uh, we're going to stay to that game plan. And we know that we can deliver great value for our customers that will in turn be great value for our shareholders. Well, I need great value for the shareholders. It's $400 in. I've seen a lower number as well. To get each phone started, you take a hit to your earnings there. There's a New York City bus back there getting in the, in the way of our interview. We like that. We like New York City buses here. Uh, but Dan Mead, when you, when you, are you going to take the bus later? Dan, no. Anyways, Dan Mead, when you look at the cost to get into Verizon, it's got to be a hit to your earnings. Do you do cost control for the next six months or is it just a leap of faith to 2012 on the earnings front? You know, we do cost control every day. It's a way of doing business and make sure that we're doing the absolute best job we can for our shareholders. And we're going to continue to do that. Uh, January 25th is our earnings announcement, so we're not making any comments right. on earnings or projections today. So, uh, so that will, uh, that will be about the end of my comment along those lines. Well, that would be very safe of you to do. You learned that out in the Midwest. What I love about your career at Verizon <laughs> is you actually started out in the executive trenches. What did you learn the first day when you were out in the Midwest doing servicing for Verizon Wireless? Were you out there, like, answering all the irate, irate phone calls from people like me? You know, I talk to customers all the time, and all of us at Verizon and Verizon Wireless spend a great deal of our time in our customer service centers, in our stores, and with our frontline employees. And we'll continue to do that. So I learn every day from our customers. Uh, they challenge us to do better. We focus on that, and we'll continue to focus well, on that. Well, you continue that. to do that. Tell me about the international expansion. Am I going to be able to use my Verizon i4 internationally? You're going to be able to use your Verizon i4 in about 40 countries where we have CDMA coverage. And then we have a great global service with other devices if you choose to roam and travel. So it all depends on where you're going to be going. When you look at the growth here of wireless, I mean, everybody's in the pool. Is it going to end up to be a duopoly? The sell side really shows it's Verizon now and AT&T. And the others really struggling. Sprint doing price, T-Mobile doing whatever they're doing. Is your strategic plan that there'll be two players three, four, five years out? I never think about our industry as a duopoly. It is wildly competitive. I think it's going to be competitive. Innovation is, con is going to continue to make it so. And I think that I think it's going to be uh, extremely competitive uh, forever. It's what? just a great place for us to be. I know you're going to tell me you got the whole CEO wrapped down. You're going to tell me it's service and we're doing this and we know your best in class signal and all that stuff. What is the distinction away from that between you and AT&T? 
Well, we distinguish ourselves by the overall experience of customers being on our network with, with great value, with great devices, with the great business partners. We challenge ourselves with that every day. We're going to continue to challenge ourselves with that. Okay. And we like the, we like the future.